Hello and welcome to the Liberation Officer hostings for 2020-21. Uh, we've asked both of the candidates to answer the questions either in written format or a recorded video. If a candidate hasn't been able to contribute, that will be on screen um, and obviously they were unavailable for this particular hustings. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the questions. So the first question is, will you work towards more spaces for women and other liberation groups to make friends with each other? I think an incredibly important remit for the role of liberation officer is mobilizing our student network, our BME network, LGBT plus network, women's network and disabled students network. As the current chair of the LGBT plus network, I think this year has been incredibly successful in terms of increasing its visibility and activity and activism. As your liberation officer, I can assure you that I will use my experience to support the part time officer to make their retrospective networks thrive. This not only includes working for more safe and social spaces for women and all of the liberation groups, but also their intersections as well. The second question is, what opportunities will you offer students to learn about disabilities such as autism and other disabilities that may not be immediately noticeable? A very good question. One of my manifesto points is to lead a university-wide cross-campus microaggression campaign. This will not only include promotion and resources relating to unconscious biases against all liberation groups, but also workshops and talks in collaboration with the networks, including the Disabled Students Network, to increase awareness and provide these key opportunities for students to learn. I think it's also important to note how things like discrimination, microaggressions, etc. can potentially lead to disabilities, as many of these carry a significant mental health burden. Raising the awareness of topics like these is incredibly important as it shows that the work of a liberation officer not only involves fighting for the rights for marginalised students, also raising awareness of their struggles and hopefully leading to improvements for their well-being and visibility. The third question is, how will you make sure the SU upholds its responsibilities under the 2010 Equalities Act, particularly in circumstances such as investigations? Both the University and Students' Union are bound by the Equality Act of 2010. I think the first step with this is ensuring that our reporting systems are robust and suitable for the use of students, especially sensitive and potentially triggering incidents regarding people's behaviour. Next, we should ensure the reporting systems are comprehensive to cover all forms of harassment and discrimination. After this, we can hold both the University and the SU accountable to deliver thorough investigations into any allegations made against someone regarding their behaviour. Uh, the fourth question is, COVID-19 has highlighted some of the worst inequalities in areas of society, particularly for students in widening participation backgrounds, international students, or otherwise part of any disadvantaged groups. What action would you take to make sure that some of the worst affected students are supported and can make their voice heard both in the short and long term? Currently, I've inputted into a project by Miles, our current Equal Opportunities and Welfare Officer, who is working with the university to ensure that all students from widening participation backgrounds receive the support that they need during these times. I think this question echoes the importance of my third manifesto point, establishing liberation forums. Without constant consultation from disadvantaged cohorts, the liberation officer would have no direction. This is why it's incredibly important that when in position, I make early connections to all relevant societies and officers. From this, we can quickly identify the critical effects of COVID-19 and truly understand how this affects students at Nottingham. And there you have it. That is the Liberation Officer hostings for 2020-21. Thank you very much to the candidates for participating. You can read both of the manifestos on the SU website and you can also vote until 1 p.m on Monday so please go and do that if you haven't already um, and also look out for the results night video which is going to be um, around about half seven on Monday so please look out for that on the SU social media pages and thanks very much for watching